Hello scholars, my name is Dr. Kara Stillen and the goal of this channel is to make academic subjects easier to understand. In the last video, we looked at specific learning disorder. And in this video, we're gonna look at motor disorders, specifically developmental coordination disorder. So let's begin. So what is developmental coordination disorder? What does this look like? Essentially, when someone has trouble gaining and executing um, motor skills, coordinated motor skills, they will be below that person's age. And the opportunity for learning and using those skills is very, very low. So the person may appear really clumsy. They may drop objects. They could bump into people or other objects. They tend to be slow. Um, if they try to do something, they may be inaccurate with doing it. Uh, it is hard for them to catch objects, to use silverware, um, to maybe use scissors, to write, to ride a bike, or even to participate in sports. Any type of sports will be problematic for them. It's not only going to be difficult to do this just daily, but when you're put to the task of having to do schoolwork or having an occupation, um, it becomes very, very difficult. There's even problems with self-care, self-management, um, and being productive is very, very difficult. Even just leisure in play can be difficult. So when do these symptoms come about? These symptoms come about in the early developmental period. These individuals do not have visual impairments. They don't have auditory impairments that could better explain uh, the developmental coordination disorder. And it's not because of a neurological condition that they have this issue. So essentially when a diagnosis is made, the whole history of the person has to be looked at. They'll not only do a physical exam, but they'll want to look back at records to look at schoolwork, to look at talk to the parents or caregivers to see what things have been like. And they'll also want to take into consideration standardized testing. When these individuals are children, they're going to have a very, very difficult time hitting certain milestones, even things such as like crawling or walking or maybe even sitting. They're going to have trouble, uh, especially with like buttoning shirts and snapping things and um, zippers will be very problematic. So even if they do achieve this skill, they will it will be slow for them to do in the future. It's not going to be something that comes um, easily to them. They may appear awkward as they try to do this. And older children just will show very slow speeds when they attempt to do those things. So the only time that this diagnosis is given is when there's an impairment that's so profound that it interferes with performance in school, um, with daily activities at home, or possibly socially or in the future with occupational issues or within the community. Now, clinicians will be very apprehensive to diagnose this disorder before the age of five. It's not typical that you'll see this before the age of five. People might have different types of impairments too. It doesn't always look the same. So some may center more on visual um, I wouldn't say clumsiness, but I would say problems with visual. Some may have more neurologic-like conditions, but it's not because of a neurological disorder. They may have impairments with gross motor skills, um, like walking or jumping, or they may have fine motor skill issues, such as cutting, handwriting, those types of fine motor skills. There may be some improvements over time, but again, it's very, very slow and there aren't a lot of expectations for great improvement. 50 to 70 percent of children that have this diagnosis remain with the same diagnosis. And again, you aren't seeing huge improvements in skills. So the first signs tend to be those delayed motor milestones. And then eventually in adolescence, um, 
There may be struggles with organizing one's own belongings, um, trying to build things. Again, sports is going to be a huge issue because of coordination issues, um, handwriting, and especially learning new tasks. That's going to be really, really tough. We're not really sure where this disorder comes from. We have not seen anything within the brain that determined that this is the disorder and where it comes from. We do think that it has to do with prenatal exposure to alcohol and preterm birth weight babies. There seem to be a category of children that have developmental coordination disorder with ADHD and then a category of children with developmental coordination disorder that do not have ADHD. We are not really sure why there is a category of people with developmental coordination disorder that have this ADHD, whereas the other group does not. But you can imagine with ADHD how much more frustrating that would be for those individuals. As you know, Individuals with ADHD have trouble focusing. They have problems with inattention. Sometimes they'll have problems with sitting still. Sometimes there's anxiety that goes along with it. So add that on top of the problems with clumsiness or coordination, and this can be extremely frustrating to the individual. And not being able to have you know, that biological diagnosis or that physical or medical diagnosis can be very, very troubling for those individuals. They definitely have a rougher time with ADHD. Now this disorder occurs across all cultures, all socioeconomic status and all races. These people generally will have reduced participation and it's very hard to get them involved in sports, but it's also important. There's a lot of um, self-esteem issues and confidence issues that comes along with it. They have, they tend to have poor self-worth, so it's really good to even try to get them involved, even though it can be very difficult for them. Um, individuals will also tend to have bad academic achievement. Um, they're very challenged by schoolwork and by the progress of schoolwork, and so they also tend to have um, poor physical fitness levels as well. So having somebody in their court that is constantly being a cheerleader for them to help them through issues can be very, very helpful. Okay, well this is the end of the video concerning developmental coordination disorder. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like the video, please click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I'm trying to put these videos together as quickly as possible. Again, I'm sorry that all the others got hacked and lost but I'm trying to put together a better product for you. So thank you so much for watching and I will talk with you soon.